Alright, good morning guys. This is my Mazda 1990 MPV. It's the four-wheel drive with the 3.0 liter six-cylinder. And we got the Jatco RE4R01A automatic transmission on this unit. And when I first got it, This back glass was shattered. <laughs> I replaced that with uh, some plexiglass. Doesn't look greatest, but you know, it, it does the job. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. Um, previous owner said that overdrive is not working on this car. And he was right. I fired it up, I drove it around. First, second, and I don't have third, I don't have fourth. So I knew something was wrong with the transmission. I tried diagnosing it electrically, you know, solenoids, looking at the TCU, putting in some more, you know, changing the fluid. None of that worked. And I should have known what I was getting myself into. But what I ended up doing is I bought a used transmission from a dismantler up in Anderson, California. For a 1998 MPV that I got the two wheel drive model. So here's the core. And these are basically the same. These are interchangeable. This is the RER, RE4R01A. They're used in Nissan Xterras, Nissan Pathfinders, Nissan Trucks, uh, Infinity QX7s, uh, you name it, Mazda, MPV. 929 and the RX-7, uh, not the turbo version, um, but this core is going to be essentially the same for every car you get, and um, that's a tail shaft for the two-wheel drive, um, there's nothing fundamental in here, it's just the tail shaft housing. And that's all the guts that came out. <laughs> um, and the torque converter. So, yeah, currently I just... I gutted the whole thing out. Um, hoping to find it. Well, I was hoping to swap the output shaft from that to this to make this a four-wheel drive transmission. I got it there. But then I opened up the <laughs> transmission pan on this. I dropped the transmission pan and it it looked like there was a you know zip ties around the connector. Someone been in there before, so I don't quite trust it. Even though the flow the fluid looked good, so I took parts from that and I went back to my original transmission, trying to see if there was anything I could do to make it work again. And here's what I found. So this is uh, around the front of the transmission. You'll find this. It's probably one of the first things that you take out. Um, it's it's this hub. Um, with these uh, rings for, for clutch assemblies to go in. Um, I took this apart. All of these clutches were in there, and these metals held in by this snap ring. So it just comes out right there. Yep. Um, so this one was really hard to get out, and you'll see why I didn't have overdrive or third. Yeah, that's um, that was never going to go anywhere. It was basically stuck onto that. I had to pry it out. So, yeah, that was terrible. And all these other ones, uh, yeah, did just show, you know, either overheating or lack of lubrication. Um, anyway, if I was to rebuild this again, or if I was to do this again, I would just have taken it apart and seen these and just ordered the, just the clutches. I think that was all I needed to really do because I... What I ended up doing, this is actually from the two-wheel drive transmission, this hub uh, assembly. I just swapped the clutch packs from the two-wheel drive to my four-wheel drive. 
And so that was enough to get me going. I have third and fourth overdrive now. No problems. It shifts beautifully. So, um, you know, before I was getting actually first, second, and then it would, um, it would over rev through third. It would slip through third. I would keep going, just pushing it, and it would kind of catch, but at really high RPMs. And then it would shift again to what seemed to me like fourth, but it was actually just second again because um, it seemed to to kind of default back to second. So I only had two gears, no overdrive and no third. Or I had third, but it was just slipping, um, which is no good. Um, this is from my four-wheel drive transmission. Um, as you can see, the oil pump is basically gasketed to the bell housing so i couldn't get that out so i actually ended up using uh the oil pump and bell housing from the two-wheel drive transmission on the four-wheel drive uh transmission so what i i just ended up you know going back and forth through these two transmissions and see what fit to make one big frankenstein um if you were to do this uh i would recommend you do the same you know, get <clears throat> get a junk transmission or just something you can take parts in and out of um, because this is the aftermath. This is what happened. If you don't put it back correctly, or if you don't know what you're doing, uh, as it was my case, you will break stuff. So here's a bearing I broke. Yep, it's broken. It There's pieces of this all over the transmission, uh, the two-wheel drive transmission. Well, so that's one of the reasons I ended up not using that one um and that's that's on me and these plastic washers love to break um i was taking it out and, and yeah it just shattered um so i had to use the the plastic washers from the two-wheel drive transmission um and then these oil seals around the, the oil pump these are the the cut cut ones yeah, I broke those too. So <laughs> I had to um, take some from here and just a, a whole bunch of stuff that, you know, you got to be real careful with. Um, one of the parts where I, I was messing up is I kept trying to put this thing together. I put the oil pump without an O-ring just to test fit. And it would, it would stick out like... Uh, a little bit more than a millimeter. The, the manual says that it should be a millimeter. Um, and as soon as I tightened up the, the bolts to the to the transmission, uh, the input shaft would just stop spinning. It would just, you would just not be able to spin it. Uh, and the output shaft would also seize up. Uh, what it ended up being, you know, I, I did a whole bunch of things. I adjusted my clutch packs. I found one that was quite bent. Uh, it was this one. And, uh, yeah, you can see that bend in it. Yeah, I thought that was for sure it. So I swapped that out, put it back together. Still wasn't it. What it ended up being was this washer. Let me go over to, uh, to the tool of drive transmission to see, show you an example. This washer, once you go in here, you see that um, hub bearing at the back. <laughs> I was of the idea that this washer goes in first, sits up against those holes, because the holes have a place for you to put them. And then you would put your, um, your hub, this piece. So what I was doing is I was placing the washer and then I was placing my hub over that washer and that's not how it's supposed to go in. So I was getting, a, you know, about whatever that is, you know, two millimeters extra of clearance when I tried to bolt down my oil pump and it was basically causing everything to seize up. I imagine the oil pump was pressing against the, uh, uh, the forward drum there or the, or the, 
break break drum. Um, yeah, just causing the whole thing to seize up. So if you do this, uh, you know, watch the rebuild video, watch it clearly, watch it, pay a lot of attention. Put the hub in first. Obviously, I'm not putting it in all the way, but that's all right. Put the hub in first. Make sure it's in all the way seated, right, right there. And then you would put in your your um, your plastic washer after that. And um, that's what this rides on. The uh, I think the Sun Gear, I think something like that. Or, or well, whichever rides on there. Basically, that washer is critical. Make sure you know where it go where it goes before you. Uh, put this transmission back together. Uh, okay, and that's torque converter for the four-wheel drive. I ended up not using it because I couldn't seat it back into the to the input shaft, no matter how hard I tried. It was not going in. So I ended up using the two-wheel drive torque converter and it works fine. I, I know what they say, that the stall speed is a little higher, but um, so far I haven't noticed the difference. Um, uh, I did end up getting a a new filter for the pan. I installed that. Um, put a new gasket, rubber gasket around the the pan. Two. Um, I would give you more tips about about this. Uh, if you guys have any questions, um, I'd be happy to answer. If you run into any snags, um, let's take a quick look under the the car so this was a pain that's the transfer case the cross member and that's the transmission pan transmission on top of it that was a pain to get out all of this was a pain to get out really um because the exhaust is in the way <laughs> and there's a couple of, of bolts that you have to to remove you know like the transmission um, dipstick tube that was a pain all right sorry if I'm rambling um, all right oh, oh yeah here's another one um, I already put the carpet back but underneath the carpet if you peel this away take out all these center consoles so you have enough room to take the carpet peel it off obviously you have to take the seat out under here, there is a, an access hole with six 10 millimeter bolts that will allow you to unplug the electrical connections, unplug the vacuum lines, and give you access to these three transmission to tor uh, transmission to transfer case bolts. So you need to take this out if you want to get to those bolts. Otherwise, it will be absolutely impossible so make sure you get peel this back and get to those two bolts um it's really really tight in there i would recommend you use a wrench because that's all that will fit and you will go very 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 um slowly um <clears throat> so yeah there's those transmission to um transfer case bolts and then the transmission to engine bolts there is some all around you really can't get through here so you all have to do it from the bottom on the floor so yeah it, you just use a combination of you know swivel heads and wobble wrenches i mean wobble heads wobble extension wrenches um you know with your 14 mil um i would use a 14 mil um long socket if you have it or deep socket uh just to give you a little more straighter to get you that torque to crack that bolt loose it was i think i spent longer <laughs> just trying to get all those bolts out than really you know figuring out what to do anyway i'm gonna turn this on i wired up a uh, push button start because um previous owner mutilated the ignition lock so here we go
nearly 2,500 acres. And firefighters. I did wire up a radio to this. So, yeah. As you can see, works fine. Um, you know, I haven't seen any issues yet. Been driving it around for, you know, two days now. I got it all hooked up and working yesterday. I even got the uh, power steering pump <clears throat> hooked up. Now, the thing about that is, if you're ever missing a power steering pump pulley, get one from a 89 to, you know, 90, whatever year they stopped making V-belts for these things. Because uh, um, the splines match up perfectly. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Yeah, the splines for that pulley, exactly the same. So, yeah, if you ever run into that. Yeah. Nissan. And... All right, the jack points for this vehicle, I would recommend to raise the front of the of the uh, car first. Just jack it up under the engine cross member or the transmission, the rear engine cross member. Um, put a jack stand right here, right on the jack point, right under here, right there. And then put them on both sides. And when you jack up the rear, just jack it up from the differential. And you can put a jack stand right under here. Right under here. Under this uh, trailing arm or whatever. Yeah. And you should be good to go. So, all right. Oh, there's a transmission jack. I, you know, this is all I had, but I would recommend something that has a little bit more of an adjustable angle. This does matter, this um, adjustment, because you do want it to be tilted uh, slightly so that you can get the transmission, you know, the transfer case in there. And this strap helps a little bit. Um, you have to get the car up high enough, though, to be able to slide that in there. So keep that in mind. If you don't have jack stands that are tall enough, um, I, I would be careful because I had to, you know, jack it up higher with the jack, higher than the jack stands so for a little bit there. To just even get the transmission under there. So if you're not comfortable doing that, I would just get some, um, some jack stands, like some five-ton jack stands. You know, I only have the three tons. Um, and I, I was, if you're going to use the, these ones, make sure they got the locking, the locking pin, because you will be, uh, kicking around in there and you might accidentally, you know, kick this thing loose. So, um, you know, I always have jack stands under and if you have an extra jack lying around, just, um, you can use that to spot your, um, uh, your jacks. Um, all right, I'm going to cut it short. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out, leave a comment. If you've done this before, I know there's not a lot of information for Mazda, so uh, let's keep this alive. And yeah, thanks for watching.